Hey everybody, it's JWitz here with a new Nintendo Fact of the Day. Today we'll be talking about the rapidly expanding world of shiny Pokémon hunting. All around the world, trainers are finding optimal ways to search for these rare, miscolored Pokémon, and today I'll be working with two hunters I'm good friends with, the Justin Flynn and my wife, Renee Kalex, on the best way to find them. Just what are shiny Pokémon? In short, they're rare versions of Pokémon that have alternate coloring. Some look completely different than the originals, while others look pretty similar. But no matter the difference, they all sparkle as they enter the battlefield. You can actually check out an older video I made about shiny Pokémon right here. But one major thing about that video is that it was made a couple of years ago. Black 2 and White 2 hadn't even hit the states yet, and now with the modern releases of X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, there are a ton of new ways to go on the hunt and add to your shiny collection. Let's hop in! Here's 8 methods for finding shiny Pokémon in the 6th generation games. Because this is by far the longest video I've ever done on this channel, I've broken it up into sections. You can instantly jump to a new section by clicking the timestamps in the description. Let's go! Starting things up are random encounters, the most basic way to find shiny Pokémon. All you have to do is go out into the grass or water and randomly encounter Pokémon. It isn't the ideal way to search for shiny Pokémon, but there are some important things to look at now that we've moved into Generation 6. The difficulty for this method is very easy. However, the time to find a shiny is very slow. Starting with Pokémon X and Y, the odds of finding a shiny Pokémon in the wild actually doubled. It used to be 1 in 8,192, but in both 6th generation titles, your basic rate for finding a shiny Pokémon in the wild is 1 in 4,096. Let's take a quick look at some of the most common tools used when shiny hunting. While walking through the wild with the odds of 1 in 4,000 encounters sounds pretty intimidating, there's a new tool that was introduced in Black 2 and White 2 onward, the Shiny Charm. We'll get to all the uses of the Shiny Charm in a moment, but in general, it triples your odds of finding a shiny Pokémon in the wild, while also increasing some of your other methods as well. So your chances of finding a shiny Pokémon in the wild with the Shiny Charm become closer to 1 in 1,365. Not bad! For almost all the methods that we run into today, we'll be assuming that you have gone through the journey to get the Shiny Charm for maximum odds during your hunt. Getting the Shiny Charm is a bit of a challenge, though. You only receive one by talking to your game's professor after completing the National Dex. This means that at one point you need to own one of every Pokémon in the National Dex, not just see them all in battle or in the wild. There are some shortcuts, though. For example, if you evolve a Pokémon, the Pokédex will remember every stage of the evolution as owned at one point. Also, if you have friends with Pokémon not in your National Dex, you can trade with them for a Pokémon you need, register it in your Pokédex, and then immediately trade it back. There are a small handful of event Pokémon that you do not need in order to complete your 6th generation Pokédex at the moment, and here is that list. So if you don't have these Pokémon yet, don't worry. You do not need them in order to get the Shiny Charm from your professor. Also, here's a fun bonus. As you complete your National Dex, you also greatly increase your odds of critical capture, where the ball whistles as you throw it, shakes in midair, shakes just once on the ground, and has a greatly increased chance of capturing your Pokémon. One common thing you'll see with Shiny Hunters are a lot of critical captures, likely because most of them have already completed their Dex for the Shiny Charm. One tool you might want to consider when Shiny Hunting with random encounters is a Pokémon with the Synchronize ability. When a synchronized Pokémon leads the party, there's a 50% chance that your encountered Pokémon will have the same nature as your synchronized Pokémon. If you're looking for a shiny with a specific nature, this will at least give you a coin flip's chance when you finally encounter it. And one final set of tools you want to consider when finding shiny Pokémon are capturing aids. An easy way to increase your chances of capturing an encountered shiny Pokémon is the Capture O Power. By continually using this in your PSS, you can build it up to level 3 and greatly increase your chance of catching a Pokémon. A final thing to consider are your Pokéball options. Obviously the Master Ball is a sure thing, and worth saving for a scary shiny encounter. Your next best option is the Quick Ball, which has a strong 4 times multiplier when thrown only on the first turn. Past that, I also recommend the Dusk Ball, which has a 3.5 multiplier at night and in caves, as well as the Repeat Ball, which will always have a 3 times modifier because you will have already completed the Pokedex to get the Shiny Charm. So if you just want to hop in and start looking for Shinies, this is a start. But if you want to dig into some more advanced methods that give you a much better chance than 1 in 1300 or so, here are all the major hunting methods. First up is Horde Hunting. 
In this method, you'll set the game up so that you only receive the new 6th generation horde encounters when shiny hunting. This method is one of the best for new hunters. The difficulty is easy, and the time for finding shinies is fast compared to most other methods. All you need to start horde hunting is a Pokémon with the attack Sweet Scent or the item Honey. Outside of battle, you can use Sweet Scent or Honey to activate a horde battle in any area where they are possible. In X and Y only, these moves will only work when the sky is clear, but in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they'll work in any weather. Your odds for horde hunting with the shiny charm are still around 1 in 1,365, but because you get to see five Pokemon at once, it's actually one of the fastest methods of shiny hunting. All you have to do is call a horde in with honey or sweet scent, and if you don't see any shinies, run and reset the cycle again. Once you do find a shiny in your horde, just remember that you need to knock out the other four Pokémon before you can throw a Pokéball at your shiny. Be careful to make sure that your shiny Pokémon isn't the one that you attack when you take down the horde. You can see which Pokémon you're about to attack in a horde highlighted at your bottom screen. You'll want to stay away from multi-hit attacks like Surf and Rock Slide as well. I highly recommend horde hunting as a starting option once you get your shiny charm. But if you want some of the most powerful Pokémon in their shiny form, our next method might be the one for you. Next up is Soft Resetting, a method used most often for finding shiny legendary Pokémon. Just like random encounters, the difficulty is very easy, but once again, the time is very slow. This is essentially doing a random encounter shiny hunt, but there's one little trick that can help you when finding a shiny legendary Pokémon. Usually, with legendary Pokémon and a handful of other special Pokémon, they stand in a room or a cave and can only be battled once. Most trainers will save their game before a fight in case you don't catch the Pokémon. With soft resetting, you save before your battle and then approach the legendary. If it isn't shiny, just reset your game and try again. Don't just turn your game off and back on again, though. Soft resetting is a technique that resets your game back to the start menu a little bit faster. On the 3DS, you can soft reset by holding down L, R, and either start or select at the same time for a couple of seconds. If done right, your game will reset to the menu, saving you a little bit of time. Just like regular encounters, this is much easier when you use the shiny charm, theoretically giving you around a 1 in 1300 chance at finding a shiny Pokémon. There's also a list of some Pokémon that, no matter what, will never be shiny when encountered. We call this Shiny Locked. In X and Y, your Shiny Locked Pokémon include the Legendary Bird Trio, Mewtwo, and the XYZ Trio. In Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, your Shiny Locked Pokémon are Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, and Deoxys. Speaking of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, the Mirage spots that you can soar to make for great Shiny resetting locations as long as you haven't caught all the Legendaries that are there already. There are a lot of rumors that the Mirage Spot legendaries have above average odds of being shiny, but there's no hard evidence that I could find to support that at this time. All we do know is that soft resetting is at least the usual 1 in 1,365. And just like any kind of shiny hunting, sometimes you'll get really bad luck. And sometimes you'll get really good luck. Our next hunting technique? Masuda Method Breeding. The difficulty for this method is pretty easy, and the time to find shinies is somewhat slow. I've touched on Pokémon breeding briefly in an old video of mine that you can check out here. The only major thing that has changed going into the 6th generation is that the Destiny Knot is even more powerful when you are breeding for Pokémon IV values. You can find a variety of great guides across the internet on modern IV breeding, but for now we're just going to focus on the act of breeding for shiny Pokémon. The Masuda method is named after Pokémon composer, developer, and director Junichi Masuda, who coded the method into Pokémon games starting in the fourth generation. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is put two compatible breeding Pokémon together in the daycare, but make sure that each breeding partner originated from a different national region. When doing this, the eggs that you hatch will have an increased odds of being shiny. If you're having trouble finding a foreign Pokémon to breed with, check out the Global Trade Station. Another good place to try are online Pokémon communities with trade sections, like PokémonForever.com. In the sixth generation of Pokémon, your odds of finding a shiny using the Masuda method without the shiny charm are about 1 in 683. Not terrible if you just want to hop in and look for shinies right now without the charm. With the shiny charm, your egg hatching odds increase to 1 in 512. The shiny charm does have less than a 3 times increase in odds with this method, but it still does help. 
The tools you'll need for Masuda method breeding are a little different than other methods. The main thing we look for are ways to make creating and hatching eggs as fast as possible. One tool that can aid you is the oval charm, which increases your chances of getting an egg over time when two Pokémon are in the daycare. You get the oval charm by talking to your game's professor after seeing all of the Pokémon in your regional Pokédex. But if you're getting the shiny charm already, the oval charm is a nice little bonus on the side. Also, as you might remember from my breeding video, eggs will come more often in every 256 step walking cycle if you breed with the same species of Pokémon and you breed with two Pokémon with different original trainers. And since you'll be breeding with the Masuda method already, you'll at least automatically have one of these two bonuses. Since you'll be breeding Pokémon and hatching eggs, you don't actually need specific Pokéballs for this method. However, if you want your shiny Pokémon to be in a particular Pokéball, just remember that the female Pokémon you breed will pass down her Pokéball to the child. For O-Powers, the hatching power allows you to hatch eggs two times faster than normal. On top of this, there are two different Pokémon abilities that can double your hatching times. Flame Body and Magma Armor. As long as you have a Pokémon with one of these abilities in your party with an egg, it will work. These abilities don't stack with each other, but they do stack with the O-Powers for a possible four times faster hatching time. On top of finding a good way to hatch your eggs, finding the best place to quickly run for steps allows new eggs to appear in the daycare quickly. In X and Y, you'll want to use the bicycle to move faster. Moving left to right in front of the Pokemon daycare isn't so bad because there's a long straight area. But if you have a full party of eggs and just need to run, you can hold left or right at the loop in Lumio City for easy batch hatching. In Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, you can use the Mach Bike for even greater speed. On top of that, there's an infinite loop built into the battle resort right next to the daycare, making it the ideal game out of the two for breeding in our opinion. Overall, the odds on Masuda method breeding are really good. The only thing that can hold you back is that it takes a lot of time for each individual egg to hatch. Next up is my personal favorite method of shiny hunting, chain fishing. This method has medium difficulty, but the time to find shiny Pokémon is very fast. Starting in Generation 6, there is a new shiny hunting method where you can consecutively fish for the same Pokémon over and over again. As long as you stand in one spot without moving or leaving, you can continually fish in the same area to drastically increase your odds of finding a shiny Pokémon. You don't even have to keep finding the same Pokémon. And you can use any of the different strengths of fishing rounds that you'll find over the course of the game. At face value, it seems pretty simple. Just keep fishing with the same rod without moving, and eventually you'll find yourself a shiny. You can either knock out or run away from the Pokémon that you find, but you have to stand still between each cast. The hard data on shiny fishing isn't exact, but it seems that as you continually find new fish without failing, you can increase your chances to find a shiny Pokémon at the end of your rod. Results for this method do vary greatly, but overall my average chain for finding a shiny Pokémon is around 80 consecutive fishing encounters without a mistake. Unfortunately, there are a few things that can lead to your failure on the chain. When shiny fishing, there are two ways that your chain can fail. The first is missing your button press when trying to catch a fish. When fishing, you have to press A the moment you see the bobber drop. It will also make a quick splashing sound. If you press the button too early or too late, the game will let you know how you messed up. The second way your chain can fail is a little more unpredictable. Sometimes, without any bad presses on your part, you'll get the message, nothing seems to be biting. Unfortunately, this message can pop up at any time and ruin your chain. There are two ways to help against the nothing seems to be biting message. The first is by carrying a Pokémon with Sticky Hold or Suction Cups ability and keeping them at the front of your party. These abilities help you fish without the random missed bites. The other method is fishing in spots that are surrounded by enclosures like rocks or dry land. This is a hint suggested by the man in the fishing shack on Route 16 in X and Y. This same fisherman tracks your longest fishing chain as well when you talk to him. In my opinion, I think this is the fastest way to find new shinies, usually taking less than an hour or two to find a new shiny Pokémon once you've mastered the technique. The only downside is that there is not a huge variety of Pokémon to find when fishing in the 6th generation with only around 40 to 50 types of Pokémon that you can find when considering both game sets, all rod combinations, and evolutions. Still, if there's a fishing rod compatible Pokémon and you want its alternate shiny form, chain fishing is probably your best option. Up to this point, every method we've talked about works in all 6th generation games, but the last three methods will only work in either X and Y or Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Let's start with the X and Y exclusive methods first. 
In X and Y only, you can find the Friend Safari in the corner of Kill Out City after you've beaten the game at least once. The Friend Safari is filled with one patch of grass for every friend that you have registered on your Nintendo 3DS system. This method is very easy and takes a medium amount of time compared to other methods. Friend Safaris are locked to individual types, but the Pokémon in each Safari varies a little bit from patch to patch. Immediately, any Friend Safaris that you own will come with two different Pokémon. However, if one of your friends has beaten the Elite Four at least once, you'll also unlock a third Pokémon in the patch. If you notice that one of your friends has beaten the game, but you still haven't seen a third Pokémon in their Safari, try having both you and your friend connecting online with the PSS to see if that updates your Pokémon count. Surging in the Friend Safari is the same as random encounters, but the Friend Safari has some special properties. First, your odds of finding a shiny Pokémon in the Safari are 1 in 512 matching some of the best methods out there for hunting. But the biggest difference is that the Friend Safari is not affected by the Shiny Charm at all, meaning this is a method you can do to hunt for Shinies easily, even without completing the National Dex. In many ways, Friend Safari hunting reminds me of Shiny Chain fishing. Both methods are pretty fast, but unfortunately you're limited to a small selection of Pokémon to hunt for. That said, if you've never tasted the thrill of a wild shiny Pokémon, but you don't have the time to grab all the Pokémon for your national decks, this might be your number one place to start. And that brings us to the last X and Y exclusive method, Radar Chaining. This method first launched in the fourth generation of Pokémon with Diamond and Pearl, but it was brought back in Pokémon X and Y. You can obtain the Radar by talking to this scientist in Lumios after beating the game. This method's difficulty is hard, but the time to find a shiny Pokémon is fast. Because Justin Flynn knows this method the best, I'm going to leave most of the explanations to him. Radar chaining is by far the most complicated type of shiny hunting, but this section of the video should help you learn the basics. What you'll need is a Poké Radar, and a lot of repels. This is also another method that doesn't need the shiny charm for maximum odds. Usually, when you use the Poké Radar while standing in the center of a grass field, you'll spawn a bunch of shaking grass patches. To start a radar chain, you must step into one of these shaking patches to begin your journey. If you find a Pokemon that you want to hunt for in the wild, knock it out to continue your chain. If you found something different, you can leave and reset your radar by walking 50 steps. Once you've knocked out your first Pokemon, the grass will immediately shake again and the music will change to this. That music means that you're ready to start chaining. The idea with radar chaining, once you've started, is to continually jump into grass that is violently shaking. The grass around you will shake at different speeds and sounds, but only the best grass moves a lot and makes the most noise when it shakes. Your goal when shiny hunting is to encounter the same Pokemon 40 times in a row, which increases your odds of finding a shiny Pokemon to one in 200 per patch. I have a tracker you can use to find your odds of finding a shiny Pokemon at any given time during radar chaining, which you can find here. As you can see, your odds increase exponentially as you get closer and closer to the magic number of 40. Sometimes, the grass around you doesn't move very fast. If you don't think you have good grass in your pile, just run for 50 steps and reset your radar. As long as you keep hearing the music, your chain is still good to go. Just make sure when you're walking to dodge any patches of grass that appeared in the field. If you step in a bad tile that shook, you'll enter a new encounter with a good chance of breaking your chain. In a perfect world, you step into fast moving grass over and over again until you have seen the same Pokemon 40 times in a row. After that, all you need to do is keep resetting your grass patches until one of them sparkles. Because your odds are the maximum 1 in 200 once you've hit 40, you have no reason to step into new grass anymore. Just keep resetting until you find that shiny grass. Poké Radar Chaining is unique because it's the only way to guarantee you will find a shiny Pokémon in the wild. If grass sparkles at any time during your radar chain, step into it to guarantee yourself a wild shiny Pokémon encounter. Unfortunately, there are a lot of things that can end your chain, forcing you to start all over from the beginning. Here's a list of things that can end your chain. 1. Finding a Pokémon that is different from the one you're chaining. This usually happens when you step into grass that looks good but isn't quite the perfect patch. 2. Leaving the area of grass that you're chaining at. 3. Quitting the game. 4. Not knocking out or capturing a Pokémon to continue your chain. 
This is different from chain fishing. You can't run away from an encounter to keep the chain going. And finally, five, walking into grass or resetting the radar on the edge of a field. Every time you walk into grass, it will automatically set off a new radar after your encounter. Sometimes, if you're at the edge of the grass field, the game will attempt to spawn grass in areas where there isn't any. If this happens, your chain is over. To help prevent this from happening, only walk into good grass if you see it away from the edge of an area. Even if good, fast-moving grass is on the edge, you can still reset it by walking 50 steps and reusing your radar to get a new selection to choose from. Sometimes, when you're using the Pokey Radar, the music will change. If this happens, you have a 1 in 200 chance of finding a shiny Pokemon. This means don't step into any grass and just keep resetting the radar. The music will last anywhere from 1 to about 5 turns and then go back to normal. You can now resume your chain from where you left off, as if nothing ever happened. As you can see, radar chaining is pretty intense. However, once you get a knack for it, it's by far one of the fastest ways to find new shiny Pokémon. I recommend trying it out in a bigger area to prevent hedge grass, and I also highly recommend playing with headphones so that you can hear the difference between good grass patches and almost good grass patches. And last but not least is the newest method of shiny hunting, exclusive to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, Dexnav Hunting. This method is somewhat easy, and the time it takes to find new shinies is medium. Because this is the newest method, a lot of data surrounding Dexnav hunting for shiny Pokémon is inconclusive. But one thing is true beyond a doubt. While you are hunting for Pokémon when using the Dexnav tool, your odds of finding a new shiny Pokémon are greatly increased. To hunt with a Dexnav, all you need to do is open the app on your bottom screen and tap a Pokémon that you've encountered before in an area. Sometimes you won't encounter any Pokémon at all. If this is the case, all you need to do is run around for a handful of steps and try again. If you don't have a lot of space to run around freely, a lot of players will use the acro bike and hold down the B button. Each hop counts as a step towards resetting your dex nav without actually counting as in-game steps for things like repels. And speaking of repels, it's highly recommended that you buy a bunch when dex nabbing so that you don't find any accidental wild encounters. When you successfully Dexnav, your screen will change and a silhouette of a Pokémon will appear. It might not always be the Pokémon you're looking for, but you can only start a battle with this new Pokémon by sneaking up on it slowly with the circle pad. If you run too quickly, you'll scare the Pokémon away, but if you move too slowly, they might leave over time. You can Dexnav in just about any area where you could normally catch Pokémon, but it's easiest to do in regular grass where they stand still. In caves, the desert, and while surfing, your Pokémon will move around, which can be a little bit tougher to chase. When you encounter a Pokémon with Dexnav, it's recommended that you knock it out. This gives you a much greater chance at finding the Pokémon you're looking for with additional searches of the Dexnav. And it also gives the Pokémon you encounter a greater chance of having rare attacks or abilities. Unlike radar chaining, finding a Pokémon that is different than the one you're hunting for does not ruin your chances to find a shiny Pokémon. If you scare the Pokémon you're looking for away, that also will not ruin your chances to find a shiny Pokémon. Dexnav hunting is very forgiving. Like I mentioned, the data on Dexnav searching is not exact yet, but here's what research seems to show. Research suggests that finding Pokémon consecutively with the Dexnav does not give you increased odds of finding a shiny. Many have referred to this method as Dexnav chaining, but it seems even if you find different Pokémon with the Dexnav, you don't break your odds or break a chain. It also seems likely that your odds do not increase over time as your search number grows bigger. And because of this, it seems most likely that simply using the Dexnav when searching for a Pokémon gives you increased odds of finding a Shiny. I also haven't been able to find any research that the Shiny Charm has any effect on your odds of finding a Shiny Pokémon with the Dexnav either. So what are your odds? My best educated guess is that it's similar or identical to the Friend Safari, where your odds are about 1 in 512 just by searching around, and the Shiny Charm might not have an impact. Looking at a smaller sample size of around 100 Shinies caught during Dex Navving from my friends and I, I found that the average odds we had were around 1 in 400. So maybe 1 in 512 isn't too crazy of an estimate. One thing I do know, though, is that Dexnavin can help you encounter a very wide selection of Pokémon, making it a recent fan favorite for casual shiny hunting without a chance for failure. 
And that is just about every major way that Pokémon enthusiasts are hunting for shiny Pokémon in the 6th gen. One huge question I get when mentioning shiny hunting is always this. Why hunt for shiny Pokémon when the IVs usually aren't perfect? Or, why spend all that time hunting for shinies when you can get perfect shiny Pokémon with a cheating device? The biggest thing about shiny hunting is that it isn't about just owning special looking Pokémon. It's about the adventure. Fighting through groups of encounters to finally see that sparkle in the wild can be a lot of fun. That's another comment I get when talking about shiny hunting. How can this be fun? Isn't it boring going through hundreds of encounters? But one of the best things about most forms of shiny hunting is that it's easy and repetitive, making it a perfect task to chill to while you're doing something else, like watching TV, traveling, or maybe even watching an online stream. Shameless plugs. However you decide to do it, I want to wish you all the best of luck on your future shiny hunts. There's a lot of colorful Pokémon out there that you might have never seen before, and there's never been a better time to start looking for these rare Pokémon. Thank you all for watching today's video. I know it was one of our longest of all time, but I hope you guys learned something new if you haven't been interested in shiny hunting before. If you want to check out some successful hunts from each of my guests, you can find some of their videos and channels right here. Also, if you enjoyed this video, consider clicking the subscribe button to get alerts whenever new content comes out. I'll catch you guys next time with more Nintendo content.